Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are talking about the new Stephen King adaptation, Mr. Harrigan's Phone. Now, I was a fan of the original uh, novella that was in, I believe it's the very first story in If It Bleeds, a collection of four novellas. Um, I liked it a lot. I, I tend to gravitate more toward um, Stephen King's, you know, kid, the, the, when, the, when there's a, a young person and an old person, I, I really like, even so much as going back to Pet Cemetery with Lewis Creed and Judd Crandall, um, it, the, I, I've always enjoyed when he has a younger person with an older person and it's a friendship. I really enjoy that aspect. I, he's used it multiple times in App Pupil, it, most recently in Fairy Tale. He's used it in uh, Lone Men in Yellow Coats. He uses it again in Mr. Harrigan's Phone. Um, to some extent, even Joyland. Um, there, there's a bunch. There's a bunch of these in the Stephen King lexicon or bibliography. I'm not sure if lexicon is the right word, but uh, it, it's almost as prevalent as Dean Koontz with you know talk, uh, with books about Labrador, super smart Labrador retrievers. Um, but I like it here because there's always a different theme going along. And what I enjoyed about the about Mr. Harrigan's phone the most was the back and forth considering Mr. Harrigan is a capitalist. He's a huge fan of money, almost to the point of, you know, well, he's definitely conservative. And him and the boy, you know, get along well, despite the fact that maybe the boy doesn't have the same beliefs. Whereas, like, with App Pupil, you have this young man being, uh, not altered, but uh, this, this old man teaching this young man to be evil kind of thing. Um, Lone Man in Yellow Coats, uh, that one... It, it travels down the same road here as does fairy tale about you know the the friendships between you know a young boy and an older man um anyways i i said all that just to say that i really love this idea and i love the novella and i love the movie um there's a lot of people out there complaining that this isn't a horror novel this isn't a horror story uh it wasn't scary that wasn't the point um, I mean, I'm sorry if you went looking for a horror story thinking, you know, Stephen King wrote it, it's got to be scary, but Stephen King hasn't written much horror in the past, I'd say, nearly two decades. All of his stuff has been literary with slight horror elements. Um, the darkest he's gone recently is probably Revival or The Outsider, as far as, you know, horror dark. Um, he has very heavy themes in all of his books. Um, but with this one, I really enjoyed this one. A lot of people didn't. In fact, I saw a lot of uh, complaints on Twitter um, about, and even in my comments, about why, why adapt this one? It's a nothing burger, so on and so forth. You know, there's no reason to adapt it. This story, this movie is full of amazing Oscar-worthy performances by Donald Sutherland, uh, I can never remember the kid's name who played Bill and It, but he's in this. Fantastic performances throughout the entire movie. Um, it does have one spooky scene, I guess, with the whole uh, Stand By Your Man playing in the background. I did expect them to use it to heavier effect in the movie because it's it's pretty it's pretty creepy to me, anyways. Um, getting you know the the ringtone. If you've seen the film, I don't want to spoil it for you, but. Um, it, it wasn't as scary as even I thought it might be, but that doesn't mean that this is a bad movie. It doesn't mean that it's also not horror. Um, it just it doesn't have the jump scares. It doesn't have the... Uh, it has a sense of dread, but it's mostly about this young man coming to grips with what he has done um, once uh, Harrigan... When, once the stuff happenings with, uh, stuff starts happening with Harrigan's phone. Um, I'm giving this 5 out of 5. Um, I see absolutely nothing wrong with this. In fact, I wish it would be up for some kind of award as far as the performances. were. It's beautifully shot also, beautifully written. It's really, really good. Mr. Harrigan is a little more wishy-washy about his politics in this one. Instead of being hard right, he's more centrist in this one. Um, where he starts uh, complaining about uh, you know fake news coming and all all that stuff, but he's he says it from a point that starts to make him sound more on the liberal side of things, which uh, I thought was odd concerning the earlier capitalistic uh, qualities of him. It just it felt it 
it felt weird. Um, but anyways, uh, and of course there were there were a lot of things in here that were definitely targeted at a modern audience, modern politics, that kind of thing, and that kind of took me out of the story a little bit. But I mean, I I loved it. I I really cannot criticize it other than you know certain subjective things where uh like i said sutherland is a little bit uncharacteristic the second time he starts talking politics and starts talking about you know what what's coming um he's very prescient in this way he was prescient in the in the book too but and it makes you wonder um there's a lot left open too like you know did harrigan do all the horrible things that people thought he did um, but then when you get to the actual phone, I'm trying not to spoil anything. When you get to the actual phone conversations, it's like Harrigan is trying to still tell Craig to stop. So if it wasn't Harrigan who was, who had done all the stuff previously, then that's the only confusion that I have there. And like I said, it, it doesn't fit into the character as well as I would like it to. Um, so either he did or he didn't. Either he's regretful or, or, or he's not. But was that what, was that the point now that I'm talking about it and talking it out? Because I don't write these reviews down. It was the point to show how much uh, the boy had changed Harrigan? I don't know. Could be. Um, but anyways, loved the story. Loved the adaptation. Five out of five for me. Um, if you're looking for something spooky to watch this season, probably don't watch this. This is definitely a drama piece, a, a character piece, heavy on the drama. And that's more the point. It's a character study um, more than it is just a horror study but or, or a horror story. But at the same time, Stephen King isn't really doing that anymore. And honestly, he never really did. It's always been about the characters. And the situation always came second to the characters. But anyways, that's that's my point of view. That's what I felt about it. If you've watched uh, uh, Mr. Harrigan's phone on Netflix, please let me know what you thought about it down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.